Eli, where does that great story begin for you? Oh, boy, I don't know. That's a hard question to start with. <laughs> where does it begin? Do you mean something that I'm writing or something that I'm experiencing, something that I'm watching? Could be both. You could maybe think of a movie that really, uh, you know, sort of drew you into your love for film. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not necessarily this. It's not necessarily the story that um, engages me. It's more the point of view. I think point of view is the most important thing, um, because I think that uh, we tell a lot of the same stories, um, but it is um, it is the way that they are told, the way that they are executed, that makes them interesting and makes them unique. Um, and I think that's the thing that I respond to and that's the thing that I'm most conscious of is what is my point of view um, in trying to tell a story. Um, what am I trying to get at that's different um, than someone else's approach to the story. So um, it's that. It's the, their view of the world and that point of view can be political, it can be apolitical, it can be um, philosophical. I, it's um, it's the uniqueness of the of the perspective of the person telling the story that I think is the the most critical. Yeah, like if you think about uh, reality TV and the dating shows, and then you take something like Sherman's March. Mm -hmm. I know that's going back a few years, but no, it's a great film. It's excellent, and just seeing the guys. I was it's Ross. Yeah, McElroy. Ross McElwee. Okay, uh, his his like hesitance and his falling in love and then mm -hmm. falling in love with someone new and then being in this small town mm -hmm. and all the expectations mm -hmm. with that. And then you could see the exact same thing and we'll, we'll leave the name of the shows out, but something about the way that Ross did it was so natural. I could have watched another three hours of it. Yeah, I mean, the way he's, he is not afraid to let um, his intention devolve. Um, and I mean, I, even if we don't even have to talk about um, a different subject matter, you could certainly, I'm sure there have been multiple films or television shows that have been made about Sherman's March that are just a kind of um, straight, what we might call expository um, retelling of the history, right? Um, and so um, and those may have value or may not have value, but I think what makes... Um, that film um, sort of so memorable, memorable is because of that approach, he's not afraid to let this, that's going to be about, oh, I met this other girl today, you know. <laughs> and also he lets, um, uh, one scene that's from that, I don't, it's really interesting, I haven't thought about that film in a long time, but you bring up one scene, when I think of that film that stands out is there's two women in the kitchen talking about, you know, we talking about the Civil War. And they lost, but when that war ha when it comes again, we're going to be ready for it this time, or something like that. And so he's um, he's still delving into the history. He's still delving into um, the sort of cultural wounds that are there, that are present, um, but also t telling this great, really funny, really unexpected. That's that's absolutely a, a great example of a kind of uniqueness of point of view um, that you would not expect when you're watching. Um, a movie that's supposedly about Sherman's March. Right, it's three hours long. Yeah, and you're like, I, I could take another three hours of this. It's so good. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, he's great. He's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, he's an interesting guy. He's a he's a fun guy to listen to. Um, yeah. And sorry, what expository? Can you just explain? So expository is like um, Bill Nichols is this. Um, he's actually a, a former professor of mine. He was up at San Francisco State and. Um, uh, he was at one time considered one of the foremost authorities, maybe he still is, I don't know, on documentary film. And so he broke down um, what he called the modes of documentary film um, and the different, their different approaches to um, trying to find the, their notion of truth. And one of them is what's called expository, an expository mode. So an expository mode is a mode that believes in a kind of absolute truth and tries to just relay facts to the audience member so that those facts might come through um, title cards that give us factual information. It might come through in a sort of authoritative voiceover where someone is giving, you know, this is when this happened, this is what this is going on. But it is a, uh, it's a treatment of uh, the documentary world and this notion of truth as um, absolute. And the film's job is to deliver 
those truths to you, those facts to you um, via different techniques. We're talking head interviews. For instance, you get an expert to come in and say, this is what happened, this is why it happened, all that sort of stuff. And um, so you could absolutely see a, a, a film, a documentary about Sherman's, uh, Sherman's March that takes that kind of tact where Here's a historian. Historian's going to talk about it, and we'll give you some voiceover, and we'll give you some title cards that'll give you the facts of when this happened and when that happened. Um, whereas um, uh, McElwee, it's much more subjective. Uh, it might even be called what we what Nichols calls performative, uh, where it's all about the personal. It's all about the subjective. Um, so yeah, that's that's um, again. I think that's what makes that it's so interesting. Was that some of what was done with 60 Minutes? I know I'm dating myself with that one, but I, I can remember. Yeah, as a style. Yeah, yeah a absolutely. Style. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, or if you, I mean, if you look at, if you look at uh, sort of documentaries, especially from the 40s and 50s, that's the stuff that kind of dominated that kind of expository style, or even something like March of the Penguins, like is, to use somewhat more contemporary example. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Where, uh, well, no, 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 I'm not <laughs> yeah. picking on you, I'm myself. I'm like, okay, let me think of something here. Um, uh, you know, that there is, uh, we're going to teach you facts. Here's facts about penguins and here's facts about how penguins mate and their whole cycle and what they do throughout the year. And we're going to use Morgan Freeman's voice. Um, to give you that information and that way there's something about selecting Morgan Freeman knowing that the audience is going to trust him sure. right um, he's going to deliver this factual information and the audience will take it as facts as the truth you know um, that's a very expository style which is way different than like the film I mentioned before um, turn on the camera uh, stories we tell Sarah Pauli's movie um, which is a really really interesting use of a kind of performative style uh, where she does these reenactments, but you don't know that they're reenactments when you're watching them. Um, and she's, she's very much throughout the course of the film questioning um, the notion of what the truth is here. She's trying to retell the story of, how, of her family, essentially. And there's also a, an extreme danger with that because you could think back to like propaganda films yeah. uh, of the 40s and 30s and things like that. Yeah, I, well, I mean, like uh, you get into, um, you do, you get into question notions of what is the truth, but um, this, here you get into ethical sort of dilemma of um, what your role is as a documentary filmmaker and what, um, what you owe. I guess, what you're supposed to try to achieve. Some would say in this kind of 60-minute six, style that uh, we're trying to, to delve into this kind of the absolute truth and trying to figure that out. Whereas others um, might say that there's no way to do that. It's impossible. There's no way to sort of remove yourself. Um, one of the ways I, if I'm lecturing on documentary film, one of the things that I will talk about is um, how it's impossible to remove bias. Um, there's no such thing as sort of um, uh, an unmediated film, meaning you, or a documentary film. Um, you can't um, remove your own perspective, no matter how hard you try. And the example I, I'll give is, you know, if I, <clears throat> if I decide that I'm going to make a film about Long Beach City College students, right? Um, that's what I've decided I'm going to do, and there's like 30,000 students that attend this school. There's no way I can talk to all 30,000 students, so I'm just going to talk to this class of 80 kids, of 80 students. But even talking to 80 students is too difficult, so I'm just going to take the first two rows, which is like 15 students, and I'm going to talk to those 15 students. And when I'm doing those, those interviews, I discover that this student over here is not interesting on camera at all. They're boring, so I can't use them. I've got to cut them out. But this student over here is really interesting, so she's going to be all over my movie because I think she's saying all kinds of interesting things, and it aligns with what I think is is um, possibly the um, uh, proper perspective about being a Long Beach City College student. So then I pose this question to them: Where's the first time I showed my bias? By choosing the one interesting student? Long before that. I showed my bias when I decided to make a movie about Long Beach City College students. Because as soon as I just made that choice, as soon as I said that I'm going to make a film about Long Beach City College students, I decided not to make a film about Donald Trump, the automobile, cats, whatever. Like, there's a perspective right there. Right. I'm saying that this is interesting, this is newsworthy, this should be a film. I have just indicated a bias right there. 
Um, and so there's no way to separate your point of view or your perspective or your way of seeing the world once because you're making choices immediately when I just decide to pick up the camera and shoot something I've made a choice um, so I, I I always think that those films a film like stories we tell a film like Sherman's March um, uh, the stuff that Werner Herzog does in like Grizzly Man um, those films tend to be for me or, or Errol Morris's uh, documentary work tend to be the most interesting because they're the ones that are acknowledging um, that this truth is out here and it's elusive and I don't know if it actually exists and we can grab it or not. All I can do is present my point of view and this is all very slippery. It's, I don't know. That feels, that feels more honest to me than here's the truth. We're going to give you the truth of the expository style. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of people who do stuff with, with observational documentary, like someone like Frederick Weissman is just masterful, or the Maisel's brothers before they died were great at that stuff.